The Conflict in Memory project was inspired by some of the remarkable war memorials to be seen in Shropshire. There are hundreds of memorials all over the county. The majority of these relate to the First World War and that are examples of what has been described as the biggest public art project in history. Many young people do not even know that war memorials exist. In this peaceful rural county, the experience of war seems very remote and what limited exposure people have has usually been sanitised through television screens and movies. And at school, every day we used to walk from the school to Acton Scott Hall and go down in the cellars, which were where, if there was an air raid, we would all have to go. The aim of the Conflict and Memory Project was to provide a bridge between veterans of World War II and young people, and to use war memorials to explore some of the issues surrounding conflict, memorial and local history by creating animated films together. It was a unique collaboration between an artist filmmaker, Dave Brunskill, Shropshire County Archives and Art Services, a number of local war veterans and children from five schools. It started with an exhibition designed by the Imperial War Museum at St Mary's Church, Shrewsbury, where the artists, some war veterans and local school children came together to share stories. Oh, and this one is a newspaper putting of the Victory Parade in Brussels. Now, most battalions in those days had a mascot, and our mascot was an antelope. And there's the antelope leading the, uh, leading the parade in Brussels. Which one's you in this? Is, it, are you this one here? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. The first part of the project was entirely research-based, using a variety of encounters to feed into an overall process of learning. The research was as important as any resulting artwork created and was informed by the input of the artist who felt that the emphasis, where possible, ought to be upon wartime childhood memories. The time I remember first, uh, we were at school and we heard this rat tat 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 we thought someone was docking on the window or some bird. Uh, and we all sort of looked through, through the window and next minute the siren went off. This is in daylight. The siren went off and we all had to go from school. And where we lived was all hills, the same as Shrewsbury. And I remember going up the hill and I could see this plane going, swooping down over the docks. We lived near the dock area. And he, he was right, and we thought, oh, well, that's it. But I thought, well, even I knew German mark, uh, markings with the Luftwaffe, with the square and the swastika. But this had funny markings, and I never thought any more of that. But apparently, next day, he killed 12 dockers. The research was based on the young people's encounters with veterans and their visits to and study of war memorials. It also involved using the internet, exploring people's own family history and interviewing local people about the effects of the war on their own communities. Did you ever actually need to wear your gas mask? Uh, not in my case, no. And I think gradually in a place like Shrewsbury, that people stopped carrying them around with mm -hmm. them and so on. I don't uh, think the Germans ever got gas no. because yeah. it wouldn't have been productive. If they'd started it, we'd have done the same. <laughs> yes. No one wanted it. When we had gas mask drill in school, the teacher would blow her whistle and we would grab our gas mask and line up to go to the hall. There we would sit cross-legged on the floor and fit our mask on. <laughs> The second part of the project involved the tying together of the material created during the research period. This included drawings and sketches, diaries and creative writing, photographs and scrapbooks. I've done this, this little diary here of, of someone and, I, and, and my dad said to me 
that his granddad told him that they had to take their washing books when they went out to buy stuff because the, the ships that were being, bringing the food, they were bombed. So not that much food came and then there was this thing about digging for victory and stuff. When trouble's in the air, we all forget our squabbles. It's trespassers beware. The nation is united. Well, tonight, I'm disappointed I couldn't be there with you. The third part of the project was a collaboration between the artist and the youngsters to construct a contemporary war memorial using the medium of film animation. This will be a lasting reminder of the impact of war for local people. The project has created a unique opportunity for an exchange between the generations. It has provided young people with an engaging way to investigate history and many of the issues surrounding conflict and commemoration. In this peaceful rural county, the experience of war seems very remote, but the Conflict and Memory Project has successfully provided a bridge between veterans of World War II and young people. More young people in Shropshire now know that war memorials exist. By collaborating with an artist with an overall creative vision, the project ensures that creativity was always at the centre of the scheme for young people. Making animated films together has enabled everyone involved to imaginatively explore some of the key issues surrounding conflict and memory. Seven years came on, seven years of time taken away, never to be. Seven years of 